everyone my name is Trushan Patel and I'm a PhD student in the mechanical and aerospace engineering department of the University of Florida the topic of my presentation today is the analysis of noise reduction method for supersonic jets in the sideline and upstream directions this work has been performed by me along with my advisor Dr. Stephen Miller to start off we would like to acknowledge the office of naval research for their uh, funding support of this work this slide shows a brief outline of my presentation today I'll start with the motivation of why we are doing what we are doing. Then I'll give a brief overview of the identification of source terms for two different components of supersonic jet noise, which are the fine scale mixing noise and shock associated noise. Uh, using the identified source terms, we'll develop statistical prediction models for these two different components of jet noise. And then using the identified source terms and the developed statistical models, we'll quantify the noise reduction from an active noise reduction technique, which is the fluidic injection noise reduction technique. And finally, I'll summarize my results and give conclusions. Jet noise creates an adverse effect on the health and hearing of the military personnel who are working aboard aircraft carriers. An image of an aircraft taking off from an aircraft carrier is shown in the figure on the bottom left hand side. And the expenditure by the US Department of Veterans Affairs each year is shown in the plot on the right hand side. And in the last decade, this expenditure has risen to over a billion dollars each year. So reducing jet noise is very important. Now I'll briefly discuss different components of jet noise. So jet noise is pre can be decomposed into two main components, which is the turbulent mixing noise and the shock associated noise. The turbulent mixing noise can be further decomposed into the large scale turbulent mixing noise and fine scale turbulent mixing noise. And shock associated noise can also be further decomposed into broadband shock associated noise and screech tones. Uh, the directivity of different components of jet noise is shown in the schematic diagram in, at the bottom, in the bottom of the slide. So the fine scale noise and the shock associated noise are mainly radiated in the sideline and upstream direction while the large scale noise is uh, radiated in the downstream direction. The spectrum of different components of jet noise in terms of sound pressure level per unit true hull number versus true hull number is shown in the plot on the right hand side. So we can see that at downstream directions, the spectrum is entirely composed of large scale mixing noise. While in the sideline and upstream directions, the broadband shock associated noise and fine scale mixing noise dominates. So in this work, we are going to mainly focus on the broad hump of shock associated noise and the low frequency of fine scale noise. And we are not going to focus on the large structure noise. So now I'll discuss a brief overview of the prediction model. Uh, this prediction model is used for the identification of the source term as well as for the development of the statistical model. So we start with the Navier-Stokes equations as the governing equation and then use a unique decomposition approach proposed by Dr. Miller and decompose the field variables into time average phase quantity, fine scale isotropic fluctuations, large scale anisotropic turbulent fluctuations and the radiating acoustic terms due to the fine scale and large scale turbulent structures. Then we bring the sources which are the base flow, fine scale fluctuations and large scale fluctuations on the right hand side and keep the acoustic radiating terms on the left hand side. Then we linearize the left hand side and use vector greens functions approach on the linearized variables. Then we can find the spectral density of pressure using a convolution integral of the uh, vector greens functions with the source terms. So after performing some simplifications, we can obtain the spectral density for a field variable as the multiplication of the vector greens function with the normal with the two point cross correlation of the source terms. The two point cross correlation of the source terms is given in the second equation. And for obtaining the spectral density of pressure, we substitute k equal to four where k equal to zero represents the field variable density, one to three represents velocity and four represents pressure. And we, so for finding spectral density of pressure, we need to find the vector Green's function of pressure and we need to find appropriate source term for fine scale mixing noise and shock associated noise. The source terms which are on the right hand side are shown in the slides. The theta zero represents the source term for continuity equation, theta i represents the source term for momentum equations and theta four represents the source term for energy equations. And there are lots of terms present in these and we need to find different two point cross correlation between different equations. So the number of terms are on the order of thousand. So we use different, we eliminate different terms using physical mechanisms and different researchers have found that the viscous terms are not very effective in sound generation. So we neglect all the viscous terms and we use a scaling analysis to identify the source term for shock associated noise and we directly identify the source term for fine scale mixing noise. So we identified two different source terms for fine scale mixing noise and shock associated noise from the Navier-Stokes equations. For fine scale mixing noise, we identified the same source term which was proposed by Tam and Oriolt using the gas kinetic theory similarity argument. 
but we obtain it independently in this work from the Navier-Stokes equations. So the source term for fine scale mixing noise is the total or material derivative of the turbulent kinetic energy from, from, from fine scale structures. And this represents the pressure exerted by the fine scale turbulent structures. For shock associated noise, we identified the source term with scales as beta power four, where beta is the off design parameter. And the source term which we identified is the multiplication of the gradient of mean pressure with the large scale anisotropic fluctuation. So here the gradient of mean pressure represents the strength of the shock cell structure while the large scale fluctuation, fluctuating, velocity, fluctuating velocity represents the convection due to the large scale structures. So now we'll develop statistical models for fine scale mixing noise and shock associated noise. So we'll start with the statistical model for fine scale mixing noise. So we use a normalized two point cross correlation model, same as Tam and Oriolt, and we substitute the vector Green's function, the source term and the normalized two point cross correlation in the spectral density formula and obtain the same final equation for predicting the spectral density as was obtained by Tam and Oriolt. We perform similar methodology for broadband shock associated noise. So we use a different normalized two point cross correlation model, which is shown in the first equation. And we substitute vector Green's function, source terms, and the normalized two point cross correlation uh, in the spectral density formula and obtain a closed form prediction, which is given in the second equation. So we use REN CFT equations for predicting the mean velocities and turbulent kinetic energy. And here I would like to point out that very good prediction results are also obtained using LES data with the identified shock associated noise source term with free space Green's function by my colleague Wei Chishen. So now I'll compare the noise radiated from different nozzle geometries. So we compare the noise radiated by the fine scale mixing noise and shock associated noise from three different nozzle geometries. The first one is the method of characteristics SMC0016 nozzle. The second one is the biconic nozzle and the third one is the faceted nozzle. So different Mach number contours are shown on the figure in the bottom uh, left hand side. So the Y axis is the cross stream direction and the X axis is the stream wise direction normalized by the jet diameter. So all these three uh, nozzles are operating at design condition with a total temperature ratio of three. For the SMC016 nozzle, we observe that uh, the shock cell strength in the potential core region is very less. While we can observe a quasi periodic shock cell structure in the biconic nozzle as well as the faceted nozzle. Different Mach number contours at different cross, -section, cross sectional planes for the faceted nozzle are shown on the bottom right hand side. And we can see the effect of facets near the nozzle exit while the effect of facets is not observed after x over d equal to 2. The noise radiated by all three nozzles in terms of overall sound pressure level at different jet operating conditions is shown on the plot on the top right hand side. We can see from the plot that the noise in terms of overall sound pressure level for the biconic case and the faceted case are very similar at all operating conditions. While the noise from the SMC016 nozzle reduces at the design condition because the strength of the shock cells is very less at the design condition. The fine scale mixing noise at fine scale mixing noise from all three different nozzles are within one to two dB of each other for all jet operating conditions. So now we will analyze an active noise reduction technique, which is the fluidic injection noise reduction technique using the identified source terms and the developed statistical models. So we modify the faceted nozzle and include two fluidic injection pores on four out of 12 facets by following the methodology of Morris and others. So we place the fluidic injectors at 20% and 70% of the divergent section at an angle of 45 degrees and 90 degrees respectively. Schematic of the fluidic injection nozzle is shown on the bottom right side. The diameter of the fluidic injection ports is 0.05 times the nozzle exit diameter and a total mass flow of 2.4% is injected from the fluidic injection ports when compared to the mass flow in the nozzle. And a computational mesh for the fluidic injection case is shown on the top right side. The mesh is refined very fine in the fluidic injection region as well as in the shear air and the potential core region of the jet. This is performed to, so that we can capture accurate physics due to the fluidic injection. And we operate the nozzle at two different overexpanded conditions, one on design condition and two under expanded conditions. The nozzle is operated with a total temperature ratio of three. 
the IPR and ITR here stands for injection pressure ratio and injection temperature ratio. So for the injection pressure ratio, we use the same conditions as the nozzle pressure ratios, while the injection temperature ratio is unheated when compared to the heated nozzle cases. So now we will show the aerodynamic results and the source locations for the fluidic injection case at one overexpanded condition and one underexpanded condition and compare the results with the faceted nozzle. So the first figure on the left side shows the comparison of numerical Schlerin of the fluidic injection case with the faceted nozzle case. In the numerical Schlerin for the fluidic injection case, we can observe that the shock cell is altered and quite complicated near the nozzle exit, while a quasi-periodic shock cell structure is observed for the faceted nozzle case. The effective area at the exit also reduces due to fluidic injection and the potential core region is also reduced because of fluidic injection. The contours of Mach number and turbulent kinetic energy for the fluidic injection case are shown on the bottom left side and we can see the influence of fluidic injection at the cross-sectional planes near the nozzle exit. The source intensity and source locations for the fine scale mixing noise and the shock associated noise are shown on the right hand side plots. For both fine scale mixing noise and shock associated noise, we observe that the sources are shifted closer towards the jet exit because the potential core length is reduced. For fine scale mixing noise, we observe that the maximum source intensity for the fluidic injection case with the faceted nozzle case is approximately the same. While for shock associated noise, we observe that the intensity of shock noise near the intersection of the shock cells with the shear layer decreases by about 50%. However, same intensity is found near the nozzle exit because of the complicated shock cell structure. For the underexpanded case at NPR equal to 5.2, we also observe complicated shock cell structure near the exit of the nozzle. In this condition also, the potential core length reduces and the sources move closer towards the nozzle exit. However, for the underexpanded condition, as the effective area at the nozzle exit reduces, the strength of the shock cell increases when compared to the faceted nozzle case. The Mach number and Dublin kinetic energy contours at different cross-sectional planes are shown in the, left, in the bottom left side. The source intensity for fine scale mixing noise is similar to the overexpanded case, while it's different for the broadband shock associated noise. For shock associated noise, we observe that the source term intensity increases by about 100% for, for NPR equal to 5.2. So now we compare the acoustic results at different nozzle pressure ratios. So the overall sound pressure level is plotted on the y-axis while the fully expanded jet mark number is plotted on the x-axis. So we observe a re reduction of about 6 dB for NPR equal to 2.75, a reduction of about 2 dB for NPR equal to 3.1, an increase of about 2 dB at the design condition and increase of about 4 to 5 dB at the underexpanded cases. A constant reduction of about 1.75 dB is observed at all operating conditions for the fine scale mixing noise. A sample spectrum at NPR equal to 2.75 in terms of sound pressure level per unit stool number versus stool number is plotted on the right hand side. So we can see that the peak shock noise reduces by about 4 to 5 dB and similar reduction is observed at higher harmonics also. And since this is an active noise reduction technique, the Fluidic injection can be turned off at on design and under expanded conditions and can give noise reductions at over expanded conditions. So, to summarize, we identified the source term for fine scale mixing noise and shock associated noise from the Navier Stokes equations. We also developed statistical models for fine scale mixing noise and shock associated noise using the identified source terms. We also examined the noise radiated from different nozzle geometries as well as we analyzed the fluidic injection noise reduction technique using the identified source term and the developed statistical models. And we observed that approximately similar noise reduction is observed for the overexpanded case at NPR equal to 2.75 when compared with the experimental measurements of Morris and others. However, different nozzle geometry in terms of design Mach number as well as the number of fluidic injection ports are used in both the cases. We can also use the same technique to quantify noise reduction from different noise reduction techniques in the future. With that, I would like to thank you all for your attention and take any questions that you might have. Thank you very much.